What to bring to a boudoir photo session for photographers. Have you started booking clients for boudoir sessions? or you want to, but you're not really sure what you need to actually do the shoot, I got you. I'm gonna tell you exactly what you need at every session to make it a successful shoot, and so you can spend as little money as possible doing it. It's showtime. Hello, my name is Mike Lloyd. I'm a boudoir photographer here in Silicon Valley. I run a multi six figure business. I've been in the game 12 years and I feel like I've forgotten enough gear going to shoots enough times to know I'm never going to make those mistakes again. And I want to share some of those lessons with you. There's basically five things you need at every session. They are your camera and lenses Two, a light source, three, a place to do the shoot Four, hair and makeup and five, hospitality. And no, hospitality is, and I don't mean that in the sense of like welcoming everybody in, although you should totally do that. That one is a game changer, so do not check out early. Trust me on this. The thing that separates the good photographers, the pros from the rookies is number five. All right, let's dive into number one, camera and lenses. Seems like the most obvious place, so that's where we'll get rolling. Firstly, you need a camera that is reliable. If you have two, that's great in case the first one breaks, but usually one is plenty. And if you're not sure which camera to get, you can always go down to your local camera store and rent them and try them out. This goes with lenses and literally any other gear. Rent things to find out what you need and then you can buy them. You can also get things used. You don't have to buy the newest, latest, greatest piece of equipment to have something that works well for you. I will say consider the size of your space. If you got a small area and you pick a camera with a crop sensor, it's gonna be tough because it increases your effective focal length, you'll need to shoot super wide angle, you get distortion, not ideal. If you choose a camera with a lens and an image sensor that is better for wider open spaces, won't work in a small studio. That's why I recommend renting things to make sure you can fit all of a person, all of the scene, everything into frame without having to like shoot outside through a window. You don't need 10 lenses, you can get by with one two, and you're covered totally. So again, you don't need to spend a ton of money and buy a bunch of expensive glass. I did almost all of my shoots with a 50 millimeter lens. Recently, I rented a 70 to 200 for like three of my shoots, and I love the way the photos turned out. Most importantly, my clients bought the close-up detail shots so I could justify spending the money on a brand new lens because I knew I would sell more photos because I had that tool. Everything that you have in the studio is a tool for a job. So make sure it's the right tool for the job and you don't need extra tools that there isn't a job for. And if you wanna know more about my setup, I've got an article on the Boudoir Guild site in the blog about why I love the Nikon mirrorless series. Nikon doesn't pay me to promote the camera, be swell if they did, but I put it on there anyway. It's the camera I use, all the lenses I use, and why I love them. So the link will be down in the notes below. All right, let's talk lighting. Notice I said originally you need a light source. I didn't say you need flashes or LEDs or anything like that. You need a way to light your subject. That could be from a window, that could be from strobes, that could be from constant lights like I have here on me right now. You just need a way to light your subject in a way that is flattering and will separate them from the background. That's it. And that could be done, again, with natural light, with strobes, or with constant lights like these LEDs. There are pros and cons to all of them. If you shoot natural light and it is a stormy day, or it's winter time and we lose light at 4 p.m., that affects how you can shoot in your studio. Also, these constant LED lights do not crank out as much power as a strobe will. So maybe you can't shoot at F8 if you want to, or you have to open your shutter too much and you get motion blur, or you have to crank up your ISO to compensate for that and then you get grainy images, not ideal. That's why I love shooting with strobes. Also because flash units, have the highest power output and the biggest selection of light modifiers, which are all the different size softbox and grids and honeycombs and snoots and everything else. Flashes are really the way to go. And they might seem scary because you've never done them before, but once you learn how to use them, game changer. I can walk into any room now and whether you give me one light or four or more, I can drop all of my gear on stands, set all of my settings, know with almost 100% certainty what my photo is going to look like before I've ever taken a test shot. And I don't use a light meter because I've used the gear enough to know what it does 
and you can absolutely get to the same thing. So if you want to know more about the lighting gear that I personally use, you can head to boudoirguild.com and when you join the membership, I've got courses in there all about lighting and I break down how I use my gear, how I use each modifier, why and when, and different ways to light your subjects. And on the blog, I have an article. Again, I'll link that down below. Seven lighting setups, one backdrop. I got one of these backdrops from Intuition and I did a promo video for them where I did seven different lighting setups against the one backdrop. And I walk you through with lighting diagrams on all of that. So make sure you check that out if you wanna learn more about how I use lights. Number three, a place to do the shoot. This is really important because you need more than just square footage. Yes, a photo studio is just anywhere where you can take photos, but this will tie into number five. There are things you need in the shoot space that are really important. One, safety and security. If you're in some shady part of town where your clients don't wanna go, don't wanna leave your car, and don't wanna walk back and forth with a bag full of underwear, probably not a great place to go. That being said, if you go to a place that doesn't have very good light inside, or it's just not clean, or there aren't designated bathrooms for your clients to use, not going to be a good space. A lot of commercial studios will be in, you know, some sort of a shopping center or business park, and maybe they share bathrooms with four other offices. I do not want my client to have to throw on a bathrobe or get fully dressed again to walk down the hall and use the bathroom. To me, that's a deal breaker. I want restrooms that they can go into, changing room, area where they can go to without having to leave my studio. That is a huge deal for us as boudoir photographers. Make it as comfortable as possible in the space. Also, parking. Your clients don't want to have to walk a mile with their suitcases full of stuff. I know that's kind of an exaggeration, but have consistent, easy parking. Hopefully they don't have to pay for. Your clients shouldn't have to pay to park or move their car every two hours because of meters. Also, your boudoir studio can be full of whatever you want. It does not need a bed. You don't need a couch. You can just bring in chairs. You can have an air mattress to blow up for part of it or just throw a comforter down on the floor. Whatever you want to do is groovy. Any furniture is going to be great. Just make sure it's clean and it's photo worthy. So when I used to do my shoots in a local hotel, I picked two hotels nearby that were very nice hotels, not stupid expensive so that it affected my bottom line, but nice enough that I felt good taking clients there. And the insides of the places were neutral colors. Well, one of them was mostly gray. The other one was red and black, which looks great with my style of photography. So whatever the environment looks like, make sure it matches your brand. Four, hair and makeup. Not every photographer offers this, and I think it's a huge missed opportunity, especially in the boudoir space. And in, for a couple of reasons. Firstly, my client walks in the door, they're not just taking their clothes off and stepping in front of a camera. They're gonna sit right here for 90 minutes, get their hair and makeup done, have a glass of wine, we have music playing, and we're just sitting down chatting, getting to know each other. I can't tell you how many clients I've photographed who've told me afterward, they're like, wow, you've got to know me better than my wedding photographer did, and that's supposed to be like the biggest day of my life. Like, I don't know their pet's name, and like, I got to play with yours and I, I right we get to know each other on so much more of a personal level still being professional but it really breaks down those barriers and makes the shoot flow so much better because they're more comfortable being themselves in front of the camera despite taking their clothes off so that's why I do hair and makeup in my sessions also I don't trust my clients to know what photo hair and makeup looks like photo makeup is different than going out makeup my stylist know how to do that on every skin type on every skin tone, every type of hair, length, color, texture, all of it. I trust them, they're professionals. And the other reason I will not do a shoot without them, my stylist sticks around for the whole shoot and assists. So when, we're, when I'm posing my client and hair falls over my client's face, I'm not gonna go move that. I'm never going to adjust my client's bra strap but my female styling team, they will step in and of course, with client permission, adjust the bra strap, fix the robe, get in my, my client's bubble. Again, with their permission, but I will absolutely never touch my clients. Having another woman in the room is a huge point of security for both me and the comfort of my client. And it's a selling point, you know? It's not just them in a room with a dude. There's always another woman present and that helps build comfort and it shows that I am acknowledging my client's comfort level before they've ever walked in the door. All right, lastly, number five, hospitality. This is what separates the pros from the rookies. When my client walks in, we spread out their outfits, they sit down in the chair that's usually, I keep pointing right here, 
I'm in the spot where we do hair and makeup in my studio. And I pour them a glass of Prosecco. I happen to have red wine right now, but I offer that when they come in. I also have bubbly water. I have like five different flavors of bubbly water that I will pour for them if they don't want a glass of wine. Or when the wine is done, they get water. I don't offer more than one because I don't want people getting tipsy in here. But it just adds to the experience. It adds to the atmosphere. It's part of the special occasion to have a glass of champagne or Prosecco. And I serve them in crystal flutes. They are fancy ass glasses that I pour this in because it's all about the experience. And I host dinner parties for my clients throughout the year. I've got one coming up next week. I invite my clients in, I cater it, or we just do like charcuterie boards and a bunch of beverages. It's about providing the experience. And that's what hospitality is. I have this sign. This is hanging outside my door. So when my client shows up, Tiffany knows that she's in the right place. And I've got a quote on there. It says, your courage got you here. Your confidence will carry you forward. That is so aligned with my brand and my message. And what's cool about this sign, aside from making them feel welcome, all of my clients take selfies in front of it and post it on Instagram. It's free marketing. So there's lots of little touches that you can add to improve the experience, and that's what I consider hospitality. How do you make this more than just a routine photo shoot? I may do this 150 to 200 times a year, but odds are my clients have never done it before, and I want every single one of them to feel just as special as everyone else. And and not because I don't make anyone feel special, but because they all feel extra special. So there you go. The five things you need to bring to every single shoot. Camera and lenses a light source, some sort of environment to shoot in, hair and makeup, who could also be your assistant, and number five, hospitality. Make it a pleasurable, enjoyable, memorable experience. So I know I've already mentioned a couple different blog posts and the membership site in the video. Those links are down below. Tons of other great videos on this channel about how to get clients, how to price yourself, like my five favorite ways to get clients in 2022. Or got another video about how to bring your photography business to six figures. Those are linked down below also. So you are amazing. See you inside.